Not long ago, my very good YouTube friend, the Smoking Ape, I call him the Ape for short, the Ape made a video on the YouTubes about SWR's myths. And in that video, the Ape goes into excruciating detail about SWRs, what the SWRs is, the history of SWRs, and all of the operational theory behind SWRs. His video had all the calculations and charts and graphs. It was like a radio dork porno movie. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And allow me to point out that if you are into that kind of stuff, far be it from me to make fun of your lifestyle or your pronouns or whatever. However, this video, the video that you're watching at this very moment is for normal people. In this video, I will explain what the SWRs is and when you need to worry about it. But I will explain it all so that the average GMRS user will understand everything and not die of boredom. In other words, this video is for normal people that actually leave their basement once in a while and actually know how to interact with other human beings. This is an SWR's meter. There are many like it, but this one is mine. I will put an affiliate link to this SWR's meter, along with some less expensive SWR's meters, in the information section below. And if you learn anything from this video today, it should be to not make the mistake of paying any attention whatsoever to all of the online experts in the online forums and video comments that will try their very best to convince you that you cannot use an inexpensive SWRs meter, such as this one, because they are just cheap Chinese junk or not accurate enough. And the reason that you should ignore these online morons is because for normal people purposes and for normal people using a GMRS radio to talk with their friends while off-roading or hiking or whatever, these normal people uses do not require a super accurate scientific measuring device. Normal people only need something that is close enough. And this is because, as I will demonstrate momentarily, normal people are probably only going to use their SWR's meter one or two times for the purposes of which I will explain momentarily, and then will probably never need to use their meter again. And it would be foolish for a normal person to spend hundreds of dollars of monies for something that is only slightly more accurate. And that is because normal people are not obsessed with trying to prove how big their manhood is to all of their radio dork friends by bragging about how many monies they waste on radio dork equipment. To be more specific, what I am saying is because normal people are not stupid or wrecked with crippling insecurities. However, the one thing that you do need to remain cognizant of is that the SWR's meter that you have or the SWR's meter that you choose to purchase is designed for whatever type of radio you have and for whatever amount of power your radio squirts. In other words, you cannot use a GMRS SWR's meter on a CB radio unless that meter is specifically designed to work on both CB and GMRS frequencies because most SWR's meters only work on one or the other. And if your radio outputs 100 watts, but you get a meter that can only handle 25 watts, it will not work out very well. Now for all intensive purposes, there are only two reasons that a normal person would want or need an SWR's meter. The first would be to measure the SWR's of their antenna, and the second would be to check the power output of their radio. However, for the purposes of this video, I am not going to talk about measuring power output. I shall instead focus upon the SWR's part of an SWR's meter. Now, before I go any further, I feel that it is my duty as a YouTube superstar to point out that I have been an unlicensed ham radio operator for over 40 years. This means that I do not have a permission slip 
sometimes referred to as a ham radio operator license, from our overlords at the FCCs. And according to some people, this means that I should not be permitted to talk about radios or antennas of any kind. So allow me to take this opportunity to point out that some people are idiots. As I mentioned only moments ago, the primary function of an SWR's meter is to measure the SWRs on your antenna. And of course, as any radio expert knows, SWRs is short for standing wave ratio. And what that means exactly is none of our concern because this video is for normal people. And normal people do not get all turned on by technical jargon and definitions because for normal people, none of that matters. But in nutshells, the SWR's meters will tell you how effective your antenna is at squirting. It's RF electricities into the air, and the meter will do this by presenting a number, such as one to one or 2.5 to one, and that number is a ratio. However, the ratio part does not matter to normal people. The only thing that us normal people need to worry about is the main number, the 2.5 or the three or the one, and the lower that number, the better. And the higher that number, the less better. And the two main reasons that a normal person would check the SWRs on their antenna, or the reason that they should, are one, to check for broken coax or shorted out coax and connectors, and B, to ensure that your antenna is not severely out of tune or has a poor ground plane. And before I go any further, I should point out that getting an accurate SWR's reading on a handheld walkie-talkie radio antenna is very difficult. In fact, it is my radio expert opinion that you should not even bother trying to read the SWRs on your walkie-talkie radio antenna because all of your efforts will result in nothing more than frustration and heartbreak. Allow me to now very quickly demonstrate how to check the SWRs on your antenna. Virtually all SWRs meters have two holes, one that connects to your radio via a short patch cord and one that connects to your antenna. And just for deconfoculation's sake, you should always use the same cable that you normally would use with your antenna because that cable is part of what the SWR's meter will be testing. Then after thoroughly reading the instructions that came with your SWR's meter, you connect your radio to the radio hole and the antenna to the antenna hole. You then put the radio on the channel that you use most often. And just a quick note, you do not need to check every single channel because remember, normal people have a life and normal people could use that time better for things like interacting with other humans in the real world. You then push the push to talk trigger and read the number that the SWR's meter presents. And as you can see, my antenna is having an SWR's of 1.01 .01 to 1, or 1.01. And if your SWR's meter gives you a reading of 1 or 2, then you're done. Throw your SWR's meter into the drawer, and you won't need it again until you get a new antenna or make changes to the coax or the connectors. If, however, the SWRs was over three, then it would be wise to investigate as to the reasons why. Now allow me to be clear and hopefully prevent any stupid comments from the online experts. There are a bazillion reasons that the SWRs on your antenna might be high, but I am only going to focus on the most common reasons. And I am sure that all of the experts will leave plenty of comments explaining the other rare one in a million reasons that there could be. If the SWRs is over three or 3.5, the most likely reason is due to the antenna being out of tune, meaning that you may need to trim it or lengthen it if possible, or you may have a bad ground plane, meaning that if possible, you may need to move your antenna 
to a better location on your vehicle. Now, before leaving a comment asking how to tune your antenna or how to improve the ground plane, please bear in mind that this is all beyond the scope of this video to explain to you how to do any of those things. And it would be foolish to expect anyone to be able to answer such a complicated question in the comments section. If the SWR is higher than four or five, or if it pegs out at something very high like 10 or 20, then this generally means that something has gone horribly wrong. Perhaps your coax is broken, one of your connectors is shorted out, the antenna isn't connected properly, or something else. In this type of situation, you should probably not use your radio until you figure out what has gone wrong, and then correct it. And just to reiterate, it is far beyond the scope of this video or the comments section to try and explain to you how to do any of that. And now for a few fact checks about the SWRs. Fact check number one. Will a high SWRs, meaning over three or so, kill your radio? And the answer to that question is no. Not most of the time. And if you do not believe me, I have put links in the more information section of this video below to two videos that bust that myth. However, allow me to be clear that this does not mean that you should transmit with a high SWRs, as a high SWRs will generate a lot of heat inside your radio, and that is not a good thing. But it will not kill your radio most of the time. Which brings up the next question. Will a high SWRs reduce your FARs? And the answer to that question is yes. The higher the SWRs, the less RF electricities are squirting out of your antenna. And the less power squirting from the antenna can and often does translate into less FARs. However, it is very important to bear in mind that a high SWRs only affects the amount of power squirting out of the antenna, and it does not affect your volume, level, or the quality of your audio in any way, as many of the online experts often claim. Question number four. Do I have to stand in an open field and away from any large buildings? when testing the SWRs on my radio? This is a very important question, and the answer to that question is absolutely 1,000% yes. If you plan on using your radio to bounce signals off the moon, or if you are trying to impress your radio dork friends by getting SWR readings with the precision of a medical-grade instrument. If you are a normal person using your GMRS radio for normal person stuff, then you can test your SWRs in your driveway or pretty much wherever you want. However, you should at least back out of your garage as being inside of an enclosed space can affect the SWRs reading enough that even a normal person would notice. And question number C, the most important question of all the questions and fact checks about the SWRs, and that question is, how many times do I need to test?